a gritty tale of revenge accompanied by a lovely guitar soundtrack let's talk about there are no saints This is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm going to do a five-minute review on There Are No Saints, which is going to be a theaters digital and on-demand on May 27, 2022. It is a gritty action tale of revenge where Neto, the main character, is a bad guy who is forced to do very bad things. And in doing this, he takes on a lot of people that he didn't want to get involved in and is forced to come to terms with things that he did in the past. Uh, so my hot take is I think you should rent this. Look, the, the film is a really good action film. It has some really great action sequences and good effects. And this lovely music, this lovely soundtrack... But I didn't really connect to the main character. His, I think it's by design, but his character is very gruff and very kind of almost one-dimensional. Even though he has some layers, like outwardly, he doesn't really have that much emotion. And there are some strange cuts in the film that have pivotal scenes that you just don't get to see. So overall, I think it's a rental. But I'm going to tell you a little more about the film. A few things I liked and a few things I didn't like. And remember, there's a five-minute review, so I'm going to cut this off at five minutes regardless of where I am. So in There Are No Saints, you have a former hitman, Neta, who's also known as the Jesuit, who went to prison for a pretty terrible hit that he performed uh, and is let out on a technicality. There is a there's an officer that I believe planted evidence. And so this person who did the crime is let out because of that. And now he's thrust out into the world. And there are still there is still some animosity towards him because of what he did. And so you're not really sure if he's going to try to go legit or not. But early on, he is kind of forced back into a life of crime because of some things that happen. He gets assaulted by the police. Uh, you know, he gets, his family gets assaulted. He is just kind of forced back into this life. And then he has to go fully back into this life in order to save his son. And so the, the main crux of this film is it's an anti-hero. It's a bad guy doing very bad things. That leads to some, some painful moments, some action sequences, and some unlikely friendships. So things I liked about this movie. The first is the action. Like I said, it's really, really good action. Like the, the effects are good. The kind of armory is good you got a nice variety of weapons you have some really good action and it is kind of a, i don't know like a more gritty realistic action like the the action sequences themselves are fairly fast paced they kind of go in you know neto is not a like artist he's not there to revel in anything he's just there to kind of get things done and move on to try to find his son so the action sequences themselves are fairly quick he'll like go in he'll do what he needs to do and then he'll move on but they are really well done like i was very impressed usually in an indie film you will have, you know, like CG effects for a lot of the gunfire. You'll have CG effects for all the blood. This has what appears to be all practical effects. You have some really well-made visceral scenes that will kind of get your blood flowing, even though they're fairly quick. The second thing I liked is, and, you know, kind of related to this, is the effects. There are some really good practical effects to accompany the action. And some of these are, again, impressive for an indie film. You have a scene where, like, they're fighting and a car window breaks. And they actually, like, break the window. It's not CG. You have a car that gets blown up, which you don't normally see in an indie film. You have a really nice car chase scene, like a really kind of well-done car chase scene where he's fighting in a car as there's another car around. It's, again, all the action is, is top-notch. It's something that I didn't really expect, but I really liked it. Uh, the third thing I liked is the cast. Like, this has a very interesting kind of diverse cast, and I loved seeing them all in there. Everyone plays very weird roles. Uh, you've got uh, Jose, you've got the main character, Jose Maria Yazbit. You've got uh, Shannon Sossaman. You've got Paz Vega, Neil McDonough, uh, Ron Perlman, Tim Roth. You have a nice collection of actors who are playing very different characters I think you're used to. And so it's fun to see them. It's fun to see them kind of take on these different roles and play kind of very eclectic out there characters. And the last thing I really liked is the music. There is this beautiful guitar soundtrack that plays over a lot of the scenes. It, it isn't there to kind of like pull at your heartstrings, but it is there to kind of set the tone and have a nice, uh, you know, constant medley. And it does give you kind of a callback to like an older Western type movie or an older style movie, which I really love. So things I didn't love so much about this movie. The first is there are some obfuscated scenes. There are some scenes where you know, things happen off screen and then all of a sudden you're like thrust into the scenario. So uh, you'll have one scene where everyone's fine and then, or at least everyone's alive. And then the next scene, someone will be dead. You don't get to see what happened. You don't, you don't really get a, a sense of, of the brutality of it. You just, they show up and the person's dead. Or there is one scene where like everything seems fine. And the next scene, that person is kidnapped. So I just wish that they had actually had these linking scenes because it did kind of make it seem like a weird transition to all of a sudden like, oh, now he's there and, and, and this person is dead. It didn't really let me get as much of an emotional attachment because I didn't, you didn't see, witness what happened. Uh, and the last thing I did not love is, you know, there's just not enough character depth for the main character, for, for Neto himself. I, I think this is by design, but he is a pretty gruff, like not very expressive person. I think that's what he was, I think that's what they were going for. But that leads to someone who almost feels one-dimensional and he's not one-dimensional like he does some things to help out his son he does some things to help other people 
but just in his outward appearance and the way that he goes about things, I didn't really connect with him. I didn't really get a connection with him. It didn't really have me become invested in his plight, even though his family was in trouble. And that, I think, hurt my overall enjoyment of the films. So that is There Are No Saints. It's coming to theaters digital and on demand on May 27, 2022. <laughs>